I use them for get a little expensive. Custom made. Found this randomly at three. Two apps. Good morning. I always get a ton of comments about my shop, asking questions, how I run things. As you may have seen in my last vlog, I upgraded my desk packing station situation. And I realized I haven't done like a desk tour or showed you all how I pack my entire station setup. So in this vlog, I thought I'd walk you through a few of the different aspects of running an online shop, running a stationary specific shop, and hopefully give you some ideas how to upgrade your shop or things you might want to look for in starting a stationary specific business. I think I'll start from the right side and then move my way to the left. Back here tucked in the corner we have my confetti and alphabet sticker sheets. These are the only sticker sheets I still print at home with my sticker maker. Back when I was first starting my shop, I bought sticker paper in bulk and I still have quite a few sticker sheets to use up. Once I use up that sticker paper, I will be outsourcing it. I have the colors separated by these little pieces of cardboard that I cut out to make sure it would fit in this basket. Pink, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, yellow, green, blue, purple of the outfit as well. Then this is the custom stamp I have for stamping envelopes. For sticker-only orders, I ship them in these envelopes, so I just wanted a stamp to have my branding on it. It's a self-inking stamp, so it doesn't require any pad. I got this custom made at no issue. It gets jammed quite frequently. I don't know if I'd recommend it, but that's, that's up to you. This crate is where I keep all of my mini sticker sheets. Okay, they're not really mini, but they're just smaller than my standard size. This mini shopping cart, I get a lot of questions about. I found this randomly at Daiso. Honestly, I just bought it on a whim because I thought it was cute, but it just so happens to be the perfect size for my freebie cards, which I like to keep facing the backside. So whenever I'm packing, I have no idea which card I'm packing at the moment. That way it stays completely random. And in the case that I'm filming myself packing orders, it's not spoiling the surprise. I have my little thank you notes, business cards right next to it. These go in every single order. So I like having them out here where it's really easy to grab. This acrylic container is also from Daiso and I obviously use it for my beaded rings. Each order that comes with beaded rings, I like to put in these little bags just so they don't get lost in the order this bear I like to keep these two pens out here or this is a mechanical pencil and this is a micron I like to keep these two out here so I can write on the order number once I'm done packing I use a mechanical pencil for the envelopes and I write it super lightly so I'm able to cover it completely with the sticker the bubble mailers I actually need to use this pen because the pencil obviously won't show up on here now these acrylic containers, they're from Home Goods. My phone grips, which I've now moved to my desktop. These are some of my most popular items on my shop, so it's much quicker for me to grab for an order. Then these drawers, I use them for my die cut stickers or my individual stickers. And I put these white stickers on it so I could label which number they are. Just so happens to make the perfect size to prop my iPad on top of, which is actually what I use for my order packing. I can put up whatever order I'm working on and scroll through the items that I need to pack this next drawer set, I have kind of some miscellaneous things. My envelopes for packing sticker orders. Ribbon and stamps, more bags for rings. And then here is my latest collection of these die cut style stickers. With the rabbit character who is new to my shop, I named her Luna because of Lunar New Year. I know that's not very original, but I kind of suck at naming things. This is a judgment free zone. In here, I have some of my keychains. And in here, we have more freebies and business cards. This container, this is where we have my Four Seasons sticker packs. As the name suggests, I've designed a sticker sheet for each of the Four Seasons, but they're only available during said season. If you want to get all four of the sticker sheets or maybe one of the months that you are missing. For example, I just put my winter sheet on hiatus and I brought back the spring sheet from last year. 
I decided to stack these two white shelf things. They kind of make these cubby holes, which I think works well for like the packaging I use. No matter what type of order it is, if it's just a plain old sticker order or if it's actually going in a bubble mailer, I will put the stickers into a glassine bag. These are not plastic. I think a lot of people get confused about that. These are not 100% waterproof, but they still provide some resistance and they're a lot more eco-friendly. This is what I used for those dividers over there. These are thin cardboard pieces that just prevent any bending or crumbling of the sticker sheets once they're in the mail. In the beginning of my shop, I had a customer message me that her sticker sheet got crumpled in the mail. So I decided to start including these for preventive measures. On top of the little cubby holes, I have these containers which contain my washi tape. I usually keep these right here under my laptop stand. This is so I'm able to watch whatever I'm feeling or have some music going on to keep me company while I pack orders. These two tapes I always have on hand, plain scotch double-sided tape to seal my sticker mail envelopes shut. And then in this dispenser, I will have one of my washi tape designs at all times. For decoration purposes, these are my seal stickers to have your logo and aesthetic consistent throughout the entire package. A stack of pink tissue paper. For orders that I can fit all into one glassine bag, I'll just put that straight into the mailer. But oftentimes there are orders that require multiple bags and wrapping it up in tissue paper keeps everything together makes the presentation look a lot cleaner and nicer in my opinion i get a lot of questions about the type of printer i use this is the canon pixma numbers i used this when i was first starting my shop to print all my sticker sheets and now i primarily use it to print the labels for my sticker mail moving on to the filing cabinet this top drawer i still have some containers of keychains. This used to be where I had phone grips, but I want to clear them out because I'm going to need that space for more scrunchies. For the next shop update, I am going to have a lot more scrunchies to store, so I think these drawers would be perfect for that. Oh, and I almost forgot. This shelf. This is where I keep my sticker sheets because I like being able to reach up and easily grab whatever sticker sheet I need at the moment. To the left of my packing station desk area, we have my storage situation. Keychains, 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 phone grips, mail pads, thermal shipping labels, cute buddies, washi tape, washi tape, washi tape. On top is where I keep my thermal label printer. This, as well as the case, is from Rollo. The reason I keep it way up top is so when I'm printing hundreds of labels at a time, it has some space before it eventually gets tangled at the bottom on top of my printer. This is my current system for packing orders. I will pull up the Squarespace app on my iPad, which is the website I use to run my shop. And on the sidebar, it lists out all the orders that I still have pending. I'll select an order. Here I can see the exact items and number of items they've ordered. Once I have all the items for the order, I'll look at it and evaluate, okay, this is a pretty small order. There's only two pieces that I have. I'm simply going to wrap the items in a piece of tissue paper. No need for a glassine bag because there's no stickers in this order. And I try to match the beige seal stickers to the pink tissue paper and just seal that shut. This next order calls for a sticker sheet. The spring sticker sheet and two random beaded rings. This next one is a sticker order, meaning 
I'm not gonna put it in a bubble mailer and it's not gonna be tracked. This is an option for people who don't wanna pay the shipping fee. Sometimes it can get a little expensive. I just make my shipping fees exactly what it cost for me to ship. Some people say it's really high and that's unfortunately not something that I can control. It's literally just the cheapest option to ship at USPS. So if you only want to order stickers, the shipping may be cheaper. However, I can't put any insurance on it in case it gets lost. I can't track and figure out where it is. That is just the risky run if you decide you don't want your sticker order to be tracked. I made this pasta a few times using both heavy cream and cream cheese. I will be trying ricotta because once again the store is out of my favorite cream cheese. I usually wait until the morning after packing orders to print all the shipping labels. No particular reason for that other than 
once I'm done printing, I can just go to the post office, drop it all off, and do it all in one session. I have these custom sized sticker labels on yellow paper for my sticker mail envelopes. I'll format all the addresses on my Photoshop template, then save it as a PDF to print out. situation. I had been looking at offices to rent in the beginning of this year, but the rent was very expensive for such a small place. So I put the office idea on the back burner because I don't think it was like a, an immediate thing, you know, I'm still hanging in there. But I had also mentioned looking into a two bedroom apartment so I could transform one of the bedrooms into a home office. When I went to renew my lease for this apartment that I'm currently at, I brought it up to the leasing office. I was like, hey, any openings for two-bedroom apartments here, I would be interested in transferring. I really like where I'm living right now. And the process of moving is so exhausting. I don't want to do it. I don't want to apartment hunt. I'm just not not ready for it right now. I do have to pay like a transfer fee because I'm going to be breaking my lease early, but it'd actually be a much more expensive fee if I were to break my lease before January of next year and move to a completely different place. I've been on the waiting list for a few months. There are a lot of people actually on the waiting list before me, but I'm currently third in line now. Maybe by summer they'll have something available for me. I also put in a request for the apartment not to be north facing, preferably south facing because you know we need that sunlight. That might have made the process a little longer but I'm not going to settle for less if I like the place I'm at right now. That's that situation. I'm just going to wait it out and work on the millions of other things that I have to do in the meantime. For lunch, I'm gonna make a very green sandwich. This is the tip that I've seen going around the interwebs these days. People are brushing their sandwich bread with pesto and using that instead of like butter or oil to pan fry it. Let's hope it's one of those things where it looks worse than it actually is.
When it comes to editing pictures for like Instagram and stuff, my go-to two apps are Lightroom for editing the actual color of the photo, the saturation, the filter essentially, and then Feed Preview, which is where I plan the layout. Right now I'm just going through all the freaking photos I took. And just on the camera app or the photo app, lower the contrast and up the brightness. Color I edit more in Lightroom. I keep all of my shop photos still saved here so I can Make sure all the colors consistent throughout. I'm gonna go up here and choose one of my early ones. And I will copy the edits. Paste it. Now to my eye, this photo looks too yellow and too green. The only like special effect I use on these photos, I like to add a bit of grain. It's very subtle, but you can see it when you zoom in like this. If you click it like this and hold down, you can see the before and the after. I end up going back and forth, deleting, re-editing the photos a few times usually. 